Well, Fed Chairman Ben Bernanke is signaling that yeah, he could be stepping off the gas when it comes to quantitative easing measures. He had to chat about what this means and how it specifically relates to South Africa, emerging markets in general. Chris Mayer, CEO of RMB Morgan Stanley. Chris, thank you for joining us. Sure. So what is your interpretation of how the markets are reacting and I suppose uh, the, the, the kind of extreme negative uh, reaction that we are seeing across risk assets? Yeah, look, I think uh, the negative reaction is much more in bonds and emerging markets. So we should explore why that might be the case. But, uh, you know, I don't think, you know, my view is Bernanke didn't say anything particularly unusual last night. I think he just reiterated what he had said before. And maybe people were expecting him to say something a bit more reassuring. So, but I think it's part of his plan. You know, he's trying to get people conditioned for the chance that, you know, this, uh, this Kool-Aid that everyone's been drinking for five years uh, is, is not a never ending thing. Mm -hmm. Just looking at uh, kind of the, the issue on the table right now, you've got uh, growth forecasts, you've got unemployment, so the labor issues, and you've also got inflation. Mm -hmm. um, and the interpretation that I've seen is that it's not going to be only about, uh, you know, the, the uh, kind of economy sticking to the Fed's growth forecast and also uh, moving towards that six and a half infl unemployment rate. It's also about inflation starting to show. Mm -hmm. uh, so do, do you do see that inflation is also going to be a major factor when it comes to are the Fed pulling back from, from easing? Yeah, I think so. That's always been their mandate. I think the new mandate is, is growth and unemployment. So I suspect it will be a combination of those things. I mean, I don't think, and you look at the gold price, I don't think anyone thinks that inflation is, is an issue globally. I think this is much more about how much did liquidity drive asset prices, so sort of second round inflation, and how much could therefore asset prices fall if that liquidity gets drained. I don't think it's so much about sort of CPI type inflation. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so let's look at the roadmap that he painted last night, and I'm just trying to put together a few notes just scribbling around here. Mm. So the market is reading that he's saying tapering is going to begin September, number one. Number two, they are saying he may halt uh, completely the bond purchases by mid-2014 provided unemployment is down to 7%. By 2015, the first rate increases. Was mm. there anything in there in, that he painted that was a surprise and that also gives perhaps definite pointers that the market point, can point to and perhaps explain some of the bloodbath that we're seeing today? Yeah, look, I, I think you maybe, I believe you've got a few more guests who can probably dig into the specifics. I'll tell you sure. why I think it's important for South Africa. Uh, and I think that's probably what your audience is most interested in is, sure. is um, you know, as a country, we import way more than we export. Okay, which means we run this trade deficit. It's a big number. Um, we have to finance it somehow. We either finance it through direct investment, which is long term, and we don't have much of that because we've got you know, specific issues as a country in terms of attracting this money. But what we have had is a lot of bond inflows. Okay, so I think you guys have talked about it. Now, the question is, if rates globally start going up, yeah. Okay. Do South African bonds look as attractive as they used to? 2015, people are saying. Yeah, maybe a U.S. bond yielding 3% or 4% is more attractive than a South African bond yielding 7%. Okay. So if those bond inflows reverse, what happens to South Africa? Okay. And the problem with South Africa is that when you look at the foreign ownership of our bond market, that in the 10-year bond area, it's as high as 70%, 70. Okay. That's way higher than a lot of the. Um, other emerging markets. And the second thing, and probably the most important, and the reason why the RAND is getting hurt so badly, is when you look at that foreign bond ownership as a percentage of our FX reserves, it's at 100%. Mm -hmm. Okay, most other markets are significantly lower than that. Mm -hmm. And so that's the problem with South Africa, is we have this big trade deficit, we have to finance it. If we can't finance it with bond flows, then the only way, the only release valve really is the currency. Okay, and so people are thinking about if the currency really weakens, structurally weakens, not just you know for yeah. a temporary, does that cause inflation issues in the country and therefore you have to raise interest rates here and then therefore what does it mean to the consumer? Yeah. Okay, there's a reason why bank shares and retail shares are the ones that have borne the brunt of the equity market sell-off. And it's for those concerns, is if this whole thing plays out and the RAND goes, we have to raise interest rates here in South Africa rather than cut them, what is, it, what is the impact on consumer spending? Who's most exposed to consumer spending? It's retail shares and bank shares. And that's yeah. why those are the ones that have been the, the most impacted year to date from all this talk about the, the backing off of quantitative easing. We don't expect you to be an economist here, uh, but very quickly, do you, do you think that, uh, that uh, we're going to see dual markets have the resolve, and it's certainly going to be a test, to raise interest rates at a time like this for the economy? 
Yeah, I, th I don't think they'll do it. Uh, you know, I think we can be a laggard. I don't think we have to lead anything. You know, I think the, the, the trouble we're going to have as a market at the moment, and you know, I spend quite a lot of time talking to international investors through the Morgan Stanley relationship that we have, is that uh, generally what you find is in an early part of a sell-off, uh, particularly in what I said with retail shares and bank shares and the bond market, the international investor is very bearish South Africa at the moment. Um, so what tends to happen is you get these overshoots uh, in mm -hmm. the currency, in the bond market, and in some of these consumer exposed shares. And the local investors that are a significant part of this market tend to wait before they step in. And I think the foreign investors often underestimate how important local investors are mm -hmm. as a driver of asset prices in the local market because they aren't that important in Russia and Turkey and these other markets that they look at. And so I think what, you know, at some point here, we're going to have a very interesting buying opportunity, I think, in emerging market equities overall. And, you know, in some of these uh, South Africa specific equities, you know, even potentially in these bank and consumer shares that have had a huge run in the last five years. Mm -hmm. So the sell off is not, you know, when you look at a five year chart, it looks like a little blip. Yeah. But at some point, even those shares probably become quite interesting again to look at. That's the point I was going to make about the fact that you've got this huge sell-off and some people are saying this might be the perfect opportunity. I mean, it's a Warren Buffett uh, yeah. uh, belief as well, isn't it? That when you've got this, these sell-offs, it's an opportunity to come into the market. But in terms of overall asset allocation, yeah. what then do you look at? Is it equities more than it is bonds or vice versa? Yeah, I mean, I think my answer today is probably quite different to what it would have been a month ago. I think 6.5% on the 10-year bond in a country where inflation is, I don't know, 5 to 6%, mm. just feels like the wrong interest rate. So mm. I think 8, 8.5% is starting to look maybe a little bit more realistic. Um, so I guess what I'm saying now is I would have been underweight bonds, uh, easy in hindsight maybe, but, uh, you know, today it's less obvious. I still like equities. I mean, I think equities... If inflation comes through, equities give you the protection. I don't think the emerging market growth story is over, and that includes South Africa. So I think you know equities give you an exposure to that. I think all this concern about China and therefore the commodity sector is, you know, it's it's now in the shop window. If you like, people are very focused on it. It's not like there's new news that might come out. So I, I like equities, and I, I think maybe you know what I would say is everyone at this point is going to tell you go into defensive shares. I think you maybe need to start thinking about going down that risk curve a little bit and start looking at something that is a little bit more risky.